So I want you to all close your eyes for a minute with me. And I want you to imagine something. I want you to imagine your favorite toy you had when you were a child. It could be whatever you want, whatever it was, just imagine it. All right, I think you got it? All right, good. I want you to hold on to that for a moment, and I want you to imagine something else alongside that. I want you to imagine you're at a place in your childhood where you just love to be. Like, it could be at your house, or at the playground. Just imagine where you want to, where you just love to be at. All right, you think you got that? All right. Now, I want you to imagine you're in that favorite place of yours, and you're playing with your toy. You having so much fun, you are enjoying yourself, you have no care in the world other than this is awesome. All right. Having fun? All right, great. <laughs> All righty, so keep that toy in your mind, but I wanna switch the setting a little bit. Instead of your favorite place, where you just love to be at, I want you to imagine you're trying to play with your toy in a hospital bed. And you're trying to fly your, your toy airplane around, but you can't because the IV tube in your arm just won't let you move. And maybe you're trying to stand your favorite action figure or your doll, but you can't because the hospital bed isn't big enough and the tray next to your bed isn't allowing enough arm room for you. Forgetting about toys for a second entirely. Maybe you just want to get up, run around, have fun, just do whatever. But you can't because you're hooked up to a bunch of tubes and wires and so all you can do is sit there and enjoy what little sunlight you can from the window which has the blind which is just too hard to adjust. If you haven't already, you can open your eyes now. I think a lot of us can connect with the first part of what I said. We all had a favorite toy of ours that we just loved so much, or we had a favorite spot that we just loved to go to to get away from the rest of the world. I think we could all connect with that, right? I don't think a lot of us can connect with the idea of spending time as a child in the hospital or just sitting in a bed all day. Well, that happened to me because when I was born, I was born with many different ailments, um, one of which is called spina bifida. And if you don't know what that is, you know how your spine develops straight? Mine didn't develop straight. It's literally a zigzag. And my case is special because I literally only have half a spine. And on top of that, it's developed like a zigzag, like the letter Z. Um, Another condition I have is called Crossfee's kidneys, which is complicated, but it's exactly what it sounds like. Both of my kidneys are smashed together. One of them is dead, and the other one is alive. So I also have no hips, which is why I'm paralyzed from waist down. And the one that you all can probably guess just by looking at me is that I have one leg. And I'm going to be real with you guys. This is the story of how I lost my leg. A couple of years ago, I was a trained professional motorcycle stunt. That's a joke. <laughs> Don't take it seriously unless you want to. I won't stop you. Uh, yeah. I know you better. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the true story is when I was born, uh, my leg developed completely wrong. In fact, it was it was literally the size of my pinky finger right here. You see it? You can hold up your pinky finger. It's, the size of that. And so the doctors at Riley Hospital, which is located in Indianapolis, Indiana, they decided it was best to just amputate it because it would hold me back from being able to move in, in ways that I can move. Um, I tried to use a prosthetic leg when I was young, but since I have no hips and I'm paralyzed from waist down, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> so you're probably sitting there wondering, well, why am I telling you all this? Well, I learned something really important that I feel is really important when I was in the hospital. Um, and that lesson was all about generosity. When I was, I've spent a lot of time at Riley Hospital, and one of those times being at Christmas time. Yeah, you heard me right. 
my, for my family, Christmas is one of the most wonderful times of the year. And so I had to spend not just one Christmas, but multiple Christmases at the hospital. And the emotions that I wanted to try and replicate for you guys in the beginning are the kind of emotions I felt. Um, when I was in the hospital, I remember just feeling alone, isolated, just bad all around. Um, I try to be a positive person, but I can't lie to you. That's, it's as depressing as it sounds. But then one day I got to pick out a toy at Riley Hospital. Um, you see, at, at Riley, what they do is all year round they would collect toys through donations and what they would do, they would go around the hospital and carry them in this like giant cart and they would pass them out to each kid and each kid could pick out whatever toy they wanted out from this huge cool looking cart. So for not one, just one Christmas, I got to pick out one for multiple Christmases and I just remembered feeling so good about it and not just feeling good about it because let's be real, any kid getting a new toy for Christmas is gonna be happy, right? Well, I, I felt different emotions on top of that one was I felt like I mattered. Um, a big emotion that was going on in my head was I'm in the hospital so no one's thinking at me right now. And believe it or not, a lot of kids in the hospital have that exact same emotion. You might not think, well, a kid wouldn't be thinking that deep, but we re they really do. Um, so I felt like I had mattered and I felt like someone was out there who remembered me and remembered the importance it is to give because like I said the toy that I had received and what other kids had received those are stuff that are being given by other people so it just made me feel like someone out there remembered me you know um, and I know it seems minuscule I know it seems small but it actually wasn't because it really taught me something because when I got out of the hospital and for about 10 years, I did a toy drive for Riley Hospital. Um, I had a lot of help from my family, my friends, and my community. And what we do is we would collect toys through donations or like we go out and just buy a bunch of toys. And then we donate them to Riley Hospital at Christmas time. Our biggest year was in, I think, 2015 when we took up a total of, I believe it was 2,000 toys. Well... There are 5,000 toys, sorry. Now keep, keep in mind, that is like if everybody in this room held 40 toys in their arms. That's how many 5,000 toys is. So um, we were all pretty ecstatic about that. So the word generosity has a simple meaning. Um, it's when someone happily gives to someone else, even when they know that they're not going to get something in return. That's what generosity is. When one thinks about generosity, one might think about someone standing outside your local grocery store, ringing a bell, collecting change for the Salvation Army, something like that. Um, it was generosity, that kind of generosity, that drove me to help Riley Hospital, but not just Riley Hospital, but to help other people. Um, because... I, just, I learned that generosity was important. And not only that, generosity is usually paired with another important thing, and that is called kindness. Um, I, even before my time at Riley Hospital, I was taught that kindness was important. Um, you have to have kindness. If you, if you want to be shown kindness, you have to show others kindness. And... Uh, so I always, I always knew that kindness was important there. And a big reason for that, me being a religious person, um, I read my Bible. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. And one of his commands is be kind to others. Love thy neighbor. Or, in fact, love your neighbor as yourself. As in, your neighbor, how much you love yourself, love them just as much. So how does that tie in with generosity? Well, I'll tell you this. There was a man who was going, who he got on a bus and he was going to the nearby bridge because he was going to commit suicide by jumping off. Because he was just at a point in his life where he did not care if he lived or died. 
But he gave himself one ultimatum. And that ultimatum was if someone, just one person, says something good to me, something kind to me, then I won't jump. So he got on the bus, and he encountered countless people that day. And you want to know how many people were kind to him or at least looked at him in a friendly way? Zero. So he followed through with his promise, and he jumped off the bridge. Um, he was shown no, no kindness. No one was generous enough to him to show him kindness. In fact, it was the exact opposite. That's why these two, generosity and kindness, are so important. They work together. They complement each other. Even if it's just a passionate, hey, how are you doing? You look good. I like your hair. Even if it's something like that or something as big as donating to a charity. Those are important because they sustain us. They keep us together. And it's important because we're all human. We live on the exact same planet. So I think it's our moral obligation to help each other, no matter if we know them or if we don't. Because at the end of the day, the world may seem like it's full of anger, hate, but the truth is there's more than enough room for kindness and generosity.